Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Marketing Your Practice podcast. How is life for you in your part of the world? It's a beautiful, beautiful, sunny Melbourne Thursday afternoon as I'm recording this right now. And I've got some really cool stuff to chat with you about today. Some things that have been ticking over inside of my mind that's really helped me move beyond areas where I've been feeling stuck. I've got lots of new stuff that's coming up for me at the moment, lots of new opportunities. And like many of us, when new opportunities come up, then often the little monkey mind inside of our brain starts to say all these negative things. So I'm gonna talk to you about how I go about dealing with those today as well. But before I dive into that, I wanna tell you a really great story. Um, Community Influencer is a small group coaching Um, that I do with a bunch of natural health practitioners from around the world. So we've got Amsterdam and Barcelona and New Zealand, Canada, uh, UK, America, Australia, you name it there, chiropractors, naturopaths, dentists, um, a whole bunch of really fabulous people. Now twice a week what I do is I open up a Zoom call and I call it open hours which means anyone can jump on if they've got any questions if they want a video reviewed, if they want a hand with their Facebook marketing, any question to put together an email, you name it from there too. So we answer those questions. And one of the things that we often like to do is we do our wins and losses. So as a group, we get to celebrate the wins that people have. And sometimes we get to commiserate the losses people have as well. It's a beautiful community. And I am, I mean this in the I'm deeply in love with this community. I really mean that in every sense of the word. They're such great people. What I love about them is, yes, they're wanting to grow their practices. I'm all for people having enormous amounts of income. But more than that, what they're really wanting to do is to grow their impact and their influence in their community because they've got something really great to offer their communities. So Lisa this time raised her hand and she said, I want to tell you guys a great story. Now, Lisa is a chiropractor here in Melbourne, and I've been working with Lisa for almost two years, maybe longer now. Um, And Lisa has been a chiropractor for almost 30 years. I tell you that because it is important. I want you to know that she's not somebody that's grown up like, you know, I didn't grow up in the technology age. You know, I didn't have internet at school. I didn't have iPhones, didn't have any of those kind of uh, things to help leapfrog me into this. So she's new to all of this stuff. And in the early days of me working with Lisa, She was petrified of making videos. In fact, I often chuckle about it there too, and I know Lisa will listen to this and she will chuckle about this too. In the early days, the number of excuses that Lisa would come up with for her not making videos, but my favorite was this, is that she couldn't start making some videos until she had a haircut and got her hair blown out. So that was one of the many excuses. So if you are making excuses, Um, And maybe you've got an even better excuse than that. If you have, share it with me. But we come up with all these reasons about why we don't make videos. And one of the great things about having a coach, a support person, is that they can kind of help you get over your stories. We're going to talk more about stories in a moment there too. But they can help us get over our limiting beliefs and encourage us. And there's a level of accountability. And after a few months of toing and froing and back and forwards, at least I started making videos. Now, she became and has become a video making machine and she makes great videos. They're perfect. She uses her iPhone most of the time. Many of them are handheld. Sometimes she has a little tripod. She makes them with her great associate, Brie, if you listen to this, a Brit rather, um, who's fabulous as well. And she makes videos sharing posture exercises. She talks about the great work she does in the office. She's taken people down to the local gym and introduced them down through there. She shot a video once at the local health food store talking about foods that help the body heal and repair. She even shot a video once. There was a lady who hand makes these great, amazing shoes um, in her community as well. And she took people down there and talked about what to look for in a shoe that fits your feet properly and what you should steer away from. The essence of what she makes and does with the videos, she makes lots of videos that helps people be healthier, helps them get a result. And she makes videos so people can get to see who she is. You know, she will share pictures of her dog and again, her family. She's this beautiful Italian family as well. So she's often sharing stuff around the bread that she makes, the fruit and vegetables that she grows and that her mum, Nonna, uh, grows inside of her garden as, as well. Now, last Friday, Lisa is going out to lunch with a girlfriend of hers who also happens to be a chiropractor as well. So she sits down at a restaurant, one in her community, but she hasn't been there before. And she's not been sat down all that long before the owner of Uh, the restaurant comes up to her and goes, I know you, I've been watching your videos. I love them. 
They are so helpful. They're one of my favorite things to watch there as well. I've been meaning to come in and see you. I need to come and see you. They're fabulous. So she feels a little bit embarrassed about that. <clears throat> Not more than two or three minutes later, another one of the staff members came up to her and said virtually the same thing. Then somebody, one of the staff members came up again and said, look, we want to take a photograph of you and kind of post it to our social medias and we want to thank you um, for all the great videos that you do. We love them. They're so helpful and we've been meaning to come and see you and we're going to come in and see you this week. Lisa, with the great work that she has been doing, has become five mile famous. I've referred to this term beforehand on the podcast. It's not a term that I invented. I wish I had. The amazing Dean Jackson came up with that term, but I love it. It's exactly what we need to get in our communities. We don't need to be famous around the world. The people that come and see us are mostly within a five mile or 10 kilometer radius of our practice there too. And the more people that know you, like you and trust you, then the busier your practice will be. So on top of this too, Lisa, after you know 20 plus years in practice, has had the busiest year in terms of patience and income that she's had since she's been in practice. And all of this inside a year that we've been really hard hit by COVID here in Australia, as tough as anywhere, particularly here in Melbourne, rather. Lots of other places in Australia haven't been impacted, but we had really tough shutdowns for 10 weeks at least where we were really significantly uh, impacted as well. Now, I tell you this story for multiple reasons, but what I want to do is I want to ask you some questions right now. And so as you're listening to this, and maybe you're like I am when I'm listening to this, I'm often kind of multitasking. So I'm walking the dog, I'm going for a drive to and from work and stuff like that too. But I do want you to think about what your answers are to these questions, because this process might be really helpful for moving you towards a future that you want to have, whatever that looks like for you as, as well. But let me just start with this simple question. Why aren't you marketing why are you doing what Lisa's doing? Why are you making short little helpful videos that you know help people get healthier in your community? Why aren't you showing up more often? Um, why aren't you positioning you and your practice as the thought leaders in, in your community? Why aren't you doing the things that you know you ought to be doing to get the results that you want to be getting? Let me say that again. Why aren't you doing the things that you ought to be doing to get the results that you want to be getting. Now, as I'm asking these questions, when you ask a question, it's really hard not to answer it. Some level of conversation is going on inside of your mind and you're giving yourself right now a bunch of the reasons why you're not doing it. Maybe it's, um, I don't know how to, I don't have the cameras, I don't know what content to make, um, I'm worried about what people will say about me. There are all these different reasons that are going on inside your mind. And here's the challenge. These reasons that you have, you're telling yourself that they're true. You're telling yourself, I don't have the camera. I don't know how to make them. And here's what I want. I'm going to ask a favor. I want you to consider just for this episode, you can go back to these reasons being true at the end of this episode, but I want you to consider just for this episode for the next few moments that maybe these are just stories. Maybe they're just a story that you're making up. And this story is what's stopping you from taking the actions that you need to be taking. Now, these stories come about for a very particular reason there too. And I want to explain a concept referred to as the motivational triad. The motivational triad has come up by, has been come up by psychologists. And it really is, it's the drive behind why we do do the things that we do. And some form of this, I'm sure you've heard before, is that there are really three things that are going through our mind whenever we want to do something new or different. And, there, and our, our mind is, is asking ourselves these questions. Will it move me closer towards pleasure? Question number one. Will it move me further away from pain? Question number two. And will it help me conserve energy? So when you're thinking, hey man, I'm going to start to make some videos that Sounds really great. What happened to Lisa? I'd like to be five mile famous. I'd like to have my busiest year ever. You know, I'd like to be positioned as an authority, as an expert in my community. But as soon as you start to ask this, you go, hmm, is that going to take a lot of energy? Yes. So that's a, you know, a, a cross through that one there too. Is it likely to lead me towards more pleasure? Well, maybe you might go, well, I don't really know how to make videos. Um, this would be really awkward. I might put myself out there. I might get a whole bunch of rejection. So you go, no. Is it likely to have me get more pain? Then as I just answered before, then you're probably telling yourself yes. 
So we tend to answer these questions this way because we have, again, what the psychologists and the neurologists will tell us as well, is that we have a negativity bias. Now, this negativity bias there too is really important to us evolutionary because back in the old days when we were walking through the savannah and there happened to be a rustle in the bushes next to us, it made sense for us to think that that was probably a lion or a tiger. We were much better to err on the side of the negative than to go, it's probably nothing, it's just the wind or maybe it's a squirrel. If we got that wrong, the consequences of it actually being a lion or a tiger there were lethal. They were deadly. It literally meant that we weren't going to survive through there too. And if we got it right, that it was just the, uh, you know, a squirrel or something like that as well, then, you know, so we have this negativity bias. Now, what I like to think about when I'm having a difficult time moving forwards, wanting to grow either of my chiropractic practices or the podcast or the other coaching work that I do, is I have all these same conversations that go on inside my mind too. My... Just because you're aware of the motivational triad doesn't mean that your brain all of a sudden stops asking these questions. It's constantly going on in the background there. It's, it is the operating system. In the same way that my phone has an operating system, whatever it is now, 10.4.5 as well, iOS 14, whatever they are too, our brain has this operating system of that motivational triad and that negativity bias as well. So what do we do about this? Well, first of all, the first thing that I'm doing is I like to really try and find out what is the story that I'm telling myself? What is the story? So if I want to start to make some videos and really the story I'm telling myself is that I don't know how to make them. Nobody's going to watch them. I'm probably going to get rejected and some haters and it just won't work. One of the first things I want to do is identify that story. And then I've got to ask myself, is that story serving me? Is that story getting me closer towards the outcome that I want? which is to have more impact and influence in my community there too. If that's what you're wanting, if you're wanting to step outside the four walls of your practice, if you know that you have a solution for the people in your community, that's why I love working with natural health and wellness practitioners, chiropractors and naturopaths and you know, natural dentists, that kind of stuff there too, because we have a solution and we have a really uncommon solution as, as well. So if you know that you make a difference, and you want to get out there and do it, then you have to start to tell yourself a different story. Now, here's the interesting thing. It, it, we're making it up anyway. So the story about nobody will watch them, everybody will hate me, it, that's just a story that we don't know is true. So if we're going to make up a story, what's a more empowering story that you could make up? Maybe it is that there is a person, a group of people in your community who are going to watch this video and learn from it, who I'm going to be able to help make a difference. Maybe they've been to multiple other practitioners and haven't been able to find a solution. Maybe you do great work with kids. Maybe you do another amazing work with headaches and migraines or whatever that you do that you're going to make this video and somebody's going to see it who needs to see it and it's going to change their life. That's a much more empowering story for you to make up. Now, I do want to, there's something I want to make sure that I, I, I really stop and and reiterate here as well. Just because you make up the story that everybody's going to love my videos and it's going to make a difference in my community doesn't guarantee that right from that next video that that's exactly what's going to happen. Because in the early days when you get started at anything new, often what happens is that we fail more often than we succeed. So along with making up a new story, in this case here, we're talking about making videos, there's also another story that you're going to need to make up and reinvent as well. And that is this, you're going to need to redefine what failure means to you. And if as well, if failure actually ever really exists. Let me say that again. Along with making up a new story about your video, your marketing, your community outreach, along with doing that as well, just as important, or if not more important, is that you're going to need to redefine what failure means and if failure even really exists. So if you make some videos and the first few no one watches them, is that a failure? Or is that just a learning opportunity as you work out, ah, I need to make my videos shorter and my videos work better um, when I'm on a nice brighter background and I have better sound here and when I followed certain different frameworks. These are all learning opportunities. And again, it's what the psychologist would refer to as a growth mindset. And if you want to read about this, then Carol Dweck is a psychologist from Stanford. She has written beautifully on, on a book called 
Mindset or Mindsight? Carol Dweck, D-W-E-C-K. It's one of my favorite books. I should remember what the title of it is there as well. But she was really the psychologist who was at the very foundation of this work and growth mindset as, as well. So I want to leave you with four questions for you to start to think about as you're moving forwards as well. So first question is this, what's an area, what is an area of your life and your practice that you would like to change? Do you want to employ more staff, employ less staff? Do you want to move? Do you want to close the practice? You know, what is it that you want to do? Do you want to start doing some community outreach, make some videos, create some blog posts, whatever it is there as well? What is the story that you're telling yourself right now that's getting in the way of you moving forwards? How are you telling yourself that this is going to cost a lot of energy for my brain? This is much more likely to move me towards pain and much less likely to move me away from pleasure. What is the story? What's a new story? If we're going to make it up because you're just making that story up because you don't know that that's true until you've done it. And even when you have done it, even if that was your past results, that's just the past. That's no guarantee that that will happen again particularly if you've been learning new things there too. So what's a new story that you could create that would serve you better in taking action and ultimately serve your community better by having you reach out to them, by you actually making some content that would change their life as well? And then finally, the fourth question, in what way do you need to redefine failure? Let me go over those quickly again for you there too. What's an area of your life or practice that you'd like to change? What's the story that you've been telling yourself that's holding you back from making this change. Question number three, what's a new story that you could create that's much more likely to have you move forward, that's much more empowering for you? And finally, in what ways do you need to redefine failure? Here's my thoughts. I really love working with Lisa for lots of reasons. She's an amazing person. And I also love that she's helping to make her community and therefore my wider community healthier and happier by sharing with them new and different ways about where their health comes from as well. I like to think that maybe we could have practitioners around the world that are doing what Lisa's doing, that are becoming five mile famous in their community, that are making a difference, that go to cafes and have complete strangers come up to them and thank them for the work that they're doing as well. I'd like to see you doing that. Okay, There's, the information is all there as, as well. Those four questions will really help you move forwards. Friends, as always, thanks for all that you do. Keep saving lives. Your community needs you so much. I look forward to seeing you back here again real soon. Love you all lots. Bye. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out the Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work one-on-one -on -one with you to apply, implement, systematize and help guide you and your practice to the next level. Now you can join me on over at adiomedia.com forward slash join. That's adiomedia.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you in there.